with the fall season right around the corner let me show you how we can improve these nice foliage colors with a little bit of lightroom editing as always you can follow along this tutorial by downloading the raw file you can find a link to it in the description of this video so with that out of the way let's begin as always we want to start with the basic adjustments so let's expand the basic panel and i'm going to change the profile right away from adobe color to adobe standard this gives me a little more control over the contrast since this profile does flatten the image just a bit before i start working on the white balance i first want to adjust the exposure slightly that means i'm going to bring up the exposure overall just right around here to kind of fix the darkest parts notice how we will introduce a little bit of overexposure as indicated by this little icon right here but that should not be a big deal i'm going to fix it by bringing down the highlights and, and that looks much better now we get a very very soft looking image since we basically lessened contrast even further and i want to continue continue lessening the contrast a bit by bringing up the shadows and then bringing up the blacks now i'm doing this so we do have a lot more room to play with with those darker areas later on when we do some masking of course at this point the image looks very very strange and very very soft but that's intended now i'm also going to bring up the whites Again, this might introduce some clipping, but at this point, I don't think that's a big deal. I can hold on the Alt key while adjusting the whites slider so we can see where the clipping is happening. You can see it in the upper right corner. And this is basically an area that is uninteresting to us. So having some overexposure here, I'm okay with that. So with the exposure adjusted, what I want to do next is to work on the white balance and doing this we can already improve this foliage color some more i want to create a warmer look for this image that means i'm going to bring up the temperature and this helps creating more of an autumn feeling for this scene let me bring it up a little more just right around here perfect then i'm also going to introduce some texture which will sharpen the image and i'm going to drop the clarity and I'm also going to drop the dehaze to add some kind of glow effect on top of this image. Okay, I'm not going to touch the vibrance or saturation. So that means we're done with the basic adjustments. We can compare the image to before real quick, but you will notice we're lacking a ton of contrast and the colors did not improve that much. Now we're going to do a little bit of masking, which will help a little bit already so let's open up the masking panel and uh, i want to start targeting the colors more specifically so i'm going to use a color range mask and i'm trying to pick a green color tone from right here so this will give us a proper selection already however i want to use the refine slider to make the selection a little wider targeting a larger area i think this looks pretty good now what i want to do in here is i want to bring up the whites so this way we are kind of dodging those green color tones and then let me bring up the saturation i'm going to raise it quite a bit but this will help to make those specific green tones pop a little more that looks good to me now let me create another color range mask this time i want to try and target something yellow right here now this will give us a way wider selection so i want to again i use the refine slider and tone down a notch and i also want to subtract using the brush and i just want to get rid of that path leading through the forest because i don't want to change that at this moment so just like this now let's see i think i want to increase the whites one more time giving the image some more punch all right then what I want to do as well is to make those yellow tones warmer. So I'm going to use the temperature slider here and bring up the temperature. All right, this is looking good. And now we're again lacking some colors in those yellow tones. So what I'm going to do is to again bring up the saturation to make the yellow colors stronger. 
that looks nice. So we have targeted green and yellow kind of separately. Of course, these two color tones are very close to each other, so some adjustments might be overlapping between those two masks. Next up, let's add some contrast. I'm going to use a linear gradient covering the left half of the image because this area is, suppo is supposed to be darker as the light is coming in from the right side. What I'm doing here is to bring down the exposure quite a bit. And I'm also going to drop the shadows a lot. And now we might introduce just a little bit of underexposure. We could try to fix it by slightly raising the blacks only a little bit like this. All right, this already helps giving the image some more depth as we introduce some more darkness on the left side. I guess we can work on that some more. I'm going to use another color range mask. Let's try to target this path right here in the middle. This isn't looking too bad, but of course we're selecting way more than needed. What I'm going to do is to click on those three dots right next to this mask, choose intersect mask with, and I'm choosing the brush. And with the brush, I'm simply going to paint over this path. All right, this looks good enough. Now what I want to do is to add contrast. I also want to drop the shadows. Let's increase the whites. And let's add some clarity. Now you can see this path is looking a little weird with this warm color tone. So what I can do as well is to bring down the temperature. And as I bring down the temperature, we are making this particular path colder. And this really helps with the color balance with the rest of the image. Since now we have something standing out color wise against the foliage of uh, the trees surrounding this path. So this just makes it look better. Then I want to make the trees a little brighter again to make them stand out. This might be a little trickier. So let me try using a color range mask and I'm clicking right in here. Uh, that actually doesn't look too bad, but of course we need to further adjust the mask. So I'm going to say subtract. Let's choose the brush one more time. And I'm just going to brush over everything that is not a tree. Okay, that's looking like a proper selection. Now let's make them stand out a little more by increasing the exposure. And I'm also going to increase the whites. Now, since these trees are kind of bright, we will introduce more overexposure as we increase the whites here. However, I think this just looks much better. So I'm okay with a little bit of overexposure being introduced in here. Then finally, let me add some more contrast using a linear gradient for the very near foreground like this. And to add contrast, I'm going to bring down the exposure making the bottom area quite a bit darker. And let me also add some contrast. Okay, looking good so far. Now one more thing I want to adjust in and that tree mask is right now you can see those trees are looking kind of yellowish. So I want to slightly bring down the temperature here, fixing that yellow color cast and maybe even bring down the saturation itself. Okay, now that's the image after the masking adjustments. Let's take a look at before. Here we had a super flat image, but with the masking adjustments, we have changed it, making it look much, much better. Now let's take a closer look on the colors. Therefore, we want to start in the color mixer panel and I want to start here in the hue tab. What I want to do is I want to further separate orange, green and yellow tones from each other. So we have some more color variety going on in the foliage of the trees. I'm going to bring down the orange hue. I'm also going to bring down the yellow hue. This will not only affect the yellow color tones, but also some of those green color tones. You can kind of see it in the foliage already. So at this point, we do have a very yellow looking forest. Of course, that's not what I want. So to change that, I'm going to use the green hue and bring it up. This will reintroduce green color tones, but we're also keeping some of those more yellow color tones. So we get a nice mixture here. I think that looks really, really good. 
Then let's head over into the saturation tab and of course we want to boost these three color tones. So orange, yellow and green. All right, that's looking much, much better. We can also make use of the luminance tab playing around with orange, yellow and green to add more contrast. What this means is we could bring down the orange luminance which will affect those dry leaves on that path making them slightly darker. I can also bring up a yellow, but here we really need to be careful to not run into major clipping right here. So I might not bring it up that much. And I'm also going to bring up the green luminance. All right, this looks really, really good. Now, what I want to do as well is to use split toning. Let's open up the color grading tab. Here, I'm just focusing on the midtones. Because at this point, you can still see the yellowish color cast, which we have introduced ourselves. But we can kind of fix that using the midtones color wheel right here. I'm going to set the hue to something cold. Let's go with something like this. And let's bring up the saturation. And as I bring up the saturation, watch what happens with the image. Just like this, we have dramatically reduced the yellow color cast in the midtones while keeping the warmer tones in the highlights. I can deactivate the split toning for a second to see the difference from before to after. That looks much more natural. Now let's do some final color grading in the calibration tab. And I'm personally always starting with the blue primary hue and saturation. I'm going to drop the hue slightly. And I'm going to bring up the saturation a lot for this shot, just because I love this effect. Then let's bring up the green hue and let's bring up the green saturation as well. And I'm doing the same for the red hue and saturation. Maybe let's tone down the blue primary saturation a bit, but I think this way it looks really, really good. Now, the only thing left to do is the sharpening in the details tab. Let's do this real quick. I'm going to drop the radius. I'm going to increase the details. I'm going to add some masking. In this image, there's a lot of things going on. So the masking does have problems here, but it still works a bit. I'm also going to bring up the amount of sharpening and that's it. All right, this is looking much, much better than the raw file from the beginning. I hope this tutorial was interesting and helpful. As always, if you have questions about the editing or if you want to add anything, feel free to write a comment and thank you so much for watching this video.